Blog Talk Radio. You are my protector and you are my provider and my deliverer. There's no other help I know. You are my protector. Stevie B's Media Production is part of the Shellcaster Network. Stevie B's Media Production presents What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. I'm your host this evening, Stevie R. Butler. This radio show is dedicated to speaking the truth of God's Word, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. We are grateful that you are tuning in to our radio broadcast this evening. This radio show is brought to you by loving and faithful members of the Churches of Christ. We would ask you to take out your Bibles and study along with us. We have a very exciting show planned for your spiritual enlightenment and your edification. If you'd like to contact us while we're on the air this evening, just give me a call to the live show at 713-955-0508. If you have any questions or comments for my co-host or any of my special guests on this radio show, you can send your emails to my new email address, butlersteve1009 at yahoo.com. Or you can call Stevie B's Media Production Studio at 910 491 Six four zero five. Now again, this program is brought to you by members of the Churches of Christ. If you need any assistance in locating a congregation in your area, please feel free to contact us. Now, folks, get out your Bibles and stay along with us here on What I Heard from the Lord Radio Show. Presents What a Word from the Lord Radio Show. I'm your host, Stevie R. Butler, and this radio show is being broadcast from Stevie B's Media Production Studio in the great state of North Carolina. Ladies and gentlemen, we are just grateful for the privilege to bring you a program where we, as Christians and members of the Churches of Christ, can share our faith and preach and teach the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ on a weekly basis. So before we go to our program for this evening, I would ask that you would bow with me in a word of prayer that we may thank God for this opportunity. 
Our most kind, gracious, loving, heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for allowing us to go through the various activities of the day and placing it on our hearts that we are on this broadcast and we are prepared now to present a portion of your holy and divine word. I'll be praying that you will be my special guest speaker, Demar, Dennis Lamar Melton, and also my co-host, Edward Bishop, as they break unto us the bread of life. Lessons upon my special guest in the community corner, Kathy O. Lofton, as she serves our community as well with her various talents and gifts to uplift our neighbors. We pray that you would bless them and their families that support their efforts as well. Father, we pray that you would bless our listeners who are tuning in through Blog Talk Radio and also through social media this evening. We pray that they may listen well and that they may consider their eternal stance before you and that their hearts may be prayed. And it will cause them to ask the question, what must I do? to be saved. Father, we thank you so much for sending the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. We're just so grateful for his precious sacrifice on Calvary's cross. For without such a sacrifice, we would not have a hope of eternal life. Father, even now, we ask that you forgive us for the transgressions of our own heart. We know our flesh is weak, and we often fall short of your will. Father, we pray that you'll continue to bless us and keep us and love us all the days of our lives. And if we have been faithful unto death, Father, we pray that you would save us. For it's in Christ's name we do ask it all. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to the broadcast. I have uh, my special guest speaker in the first segment will be Dennis Lamar Melton. He serves with the Sultanan and the Renaissance Church of Christ there in Atlanta, Georgia. He'll be making his proclamation of the gospel of Christ. And also my guest in the community corner is Kathy O. Lawton from Memphis, Tennessee. She serves with the South Parkway East Church of Christ there in Memphis. And to close out the show, my co-host, Edward Bishop. He serves with the Niagara Falls Church of Christ there in Niagara Falls, New York. He'll be making his proclamation of the gospel of Christ to close out the show. So open up your Bibles now and open your minds and let's have a great show. After the break, next voice you hear be that of my special guest speaker, Dennis Lamar Melton. Enjoy the show. He is the ruler of righteousness. He's the authority of the ages. He's the holiness of heaven. He's the God of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my Christ. And I want you to come to know him for yourself. Be my Lord and Savior. Changing my life and my behavior. Making the choices that will favor him. Looking above my aim is higher, trusting in him is my desire, making the day to day requires him. All I ever wanted was true, all I ever needed was you, all that I want is you, all that I want is you, all that I need is mercy, making me be from sin. All that I want is Jesus, all that I want is Him, all that I need is mercy, making me free from sin. Do you want to know Him? Knowing the truth no longer, guessing every morning I'm confessing, daily I'm thanking you for blessing me. Taking control, he feels my yearning. Now that I know there's much I'm learning, knowing my Lord will soon return for me. All I ever knew. All I ever knew had no use. All I ever need comes from you. All that I want is you. All that I want is you. All that I need is mercy. Making me free from 
to hear from everyone and know that everyone uh, is alive and well. And for those who went on to the other side, we pray that God have mercy on their soul. And we know that those who went to the other side in Christ, they're doing well. Because Paul said on one occasion, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And I want to thank the God of heaven for allowing me to see this day. I want to thank Brother Steve R. Butler for allowing me uh, the ability and the opportunity to share a word of God, particular ministry. I think it's a good ministry. We have so many teachers and good preachers and that come on this show and do a wonderful job. And then we have uh, brothers and sisters that do the community corner. They got a lot of amazing things going on. So I'm just proud and thankful to God and thankful to Brother Butler for allowing me to be a part of this wonderful ministry. We can never do enough and never praise God enough and never uplift his name enough to give him the glory that he so richly deserves. So I am very thankful and pleased to be able to share a word of the Lord, a word from the Lord with you on this day. And I want to deal with a particular subject because we all know what's been going on for the past five or six months. Number one, we've been dealing with a pandemic. We've been dealing with the pandemic that has taken us back to 1917 or 1918. This was long before many of us was born, but there was a pandemic nearly 100 years ago that has hampered this country. And now we have a COVID-19 pandemic that has hampered uh, our nation, and we've lost so many lives due to it, and so many lives have been hindered. So many people have lost jobs and, and things of that nature. It has put us uh, in a serious reality check, and it has caused so much anxiety, so much stress, and so much uh, loneliness for those who had to be quarantined, and for some people, they are suicidal, and unfortunately, others had to go through uh, sexual abuse, and we just had to, we had to pray for those people and, and, and also send whatever blessings we can to those people to help them, and not only that, we just last week had a hurricane, um, we had a hurricane. Hurricane Laura went up through uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana, and through other parts of the country, causing devastation. I think there was one life lost, probably more than we know, uh, but one life is more than enough. So our country has seen its share of problems. And then we got the problem of racial injustice that's going on in our country. And when we have all of these things going on, a lot of people say, well, where is God in all of this? How can I trust God? Where is God? You know, the atheists out there constantly saying, where is God? And then you may have those 
who have faith in God, but their faith may be challenged right now. Where is God? How is why is this loving God allowing so much of this turmoil to happen? Well, we're going to examine the scriptures and we're going to see, show, and prove that God is still the same loving God, and He is the same powerful healing God. And we don't need to. And we're going to show that God, uh, even in the midst of storm and even in the midst of chaos, God can bring order. When God first created the heavens and the earth, the earth was out formed. The earth was in a chaotic state, much like Jupiter and Neptune. These are gas giants, but they are chaotic in their storms. And earth was was like that. Earth was without form. It was in a chaotic situation. But God said, let there be light. God brought uh, stability, and God brought stableness out of a chaotic situation. And so we want to always understand how God works and how wonderful God is, and we don't need to ever question the fact that God can bring equilibrium out of a chaotic situation. And so we're going to deal with the problem, same problems, different days, same God Almighty, same healer of nations. He is a healer of nations, and whenever God allows things to happen, he's trying to get the world to see and adhere to his commands. Because a lot of the world problems that are going on today, they had their origin in Genesis chapter 3. Now, I know you may say, well, what what took place in Genesis chapter 3? Well, before Genesis chapter 3, the world and all that were in it was perfect. There was perfect peace. There was perfect unity, perfect love. Let me say that again. Before Genesis 3, the world and all that were in it was perfect. There was perfect peace, meaning no, no chaos. No animals fighting and eating each other. No racial injustice. No hatred. No bigotry. There was perfect unity between Adam and Eve and the Heavenly Father who created them. And there was perfect love between them as well. After Genesis 3, the fall of man, that's general and woman. And when the fall of man came, it also came the fall of perfect peace, love, and unity. Therefore, since Genesis 3, all that is taking place today is a direct result or consequence of the fall of man. Now, Adam and Eve sinned, and when they sinned, opened the floodgates for sin to enter the world, and sin has many manifestations. You may not have had a lot of the things going on in the early stages of the life of Adam and Eve, such as racial injustice and such as uh, atheism and things of that nature. But as time went on, sin began to multiply and manifest itself in many forms. And so we need to understand that God, even when this happened, God, in the midst of that chaos of sin, God already prepared a solution, a healing solution to the problem of sin. And that is the sending of his dear son, Jesus, Yeshua the Christ. And when we look at Jesus, Yeshua the Christ, it is vital for all of mankind to look back to God Almighty, look back to his solution, look back to his remedy for all of life's problems. Because trust me, the solution of sending Jesus Christ is centered around the love of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Everything was start with love. As a matter of fact, Paul would say on one occasion, talked about spiritual gifts. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, he gets to the last part of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He says, you have hope, faith, and love. But the greatest of these is love. So the gift of love is the greatest gift. It is not our cars. It is not our home. It is not our degrees. And although having nice cars and home or degrees are fine, I'm not speaking again. But without love, what good is it? Look at the chaos that's going on across the world. And no matter what country you find, no matter what country you name, there is chaos. And you have a lot of people in those countries with degrees and with nice things. But there's an element missing, and the element that is missing, you can trace it back. The element that is missing in every chaotic situation is going to be the element of love. 
And love is not just a four-letter word. Love is not just some infatuated feeling. Love is a designation for God himself. For the Bible says that God is love. So if you want to know the true definition of love, you have to look at God himself. And there are dynamics to love. Yes, you have phileo and agape, but you want to look at the ultimate source of love itself, and that is God Almighty. Okay? God Almighty knew of all of the things that would happen prior to Genesis 3, and he put together a plan of redemption and restoration to heal mankind and their nations. This plan consists of the very love, unity, and peace that existed prior to Genesis 3. And it is the, and it is the bringing together of all nations, all nations, that is ethnic groups, into and unto the house of God. Let me say that again. It is the plan of God is the bringing together of all nations, that is all ethnic groups, into and unto the house of God. If you have your Bibles, go to Isaiah chapter 2. And when you go to Isaiah chapter 2, most of the people in the Church of Christ are familiar with this. But when you go to Isaiah chapter 2, and we'll read verses 1 and 3, it says, the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains or hills and shall be exalted above the mountains and hills. And all nations shall flow unto it. And many people shall go and say, come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of God of Jacob. Teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord Most High Yahweh from Jerusalem. It is vital for man to understand what the will of God is. Because Satan's job in Genesis chapter 3, was to pull man away from God's will. And so our world needs to go back to God. No matter how they shape it, no matter what they think, no matter how they feel, our nation's leaders, our nation's ethnic groups, we all need to go back to Almighty God and learn of his will and of his path and learn of his word and commands which went forth from Jerusalem. And if you have your Bibles, go to Acts chapter 2. Let's see the fruition of Isaiah chapter 2. We read Isaiah chapter 2. Now we're going to Acts chapter 2. It is is not a coincidence that uh, we have read Isaiah chapter 2, and now we're in Acts chapter 2. And in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, They were all with one accord in one place, speaking of the apostles. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing, as of as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, or divided tongues, like as of fire, like as of fire, not literal fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues or languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, why would the Holy Spirit have them speak in different languages? Next verse. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Every nation under heaven. Now, isn't that amazing? That every nation, now the world wasn't as as populated 2,000 years ago as it was now, but the point of the matter is every nation under heaven, God wanted every nation under heaven to hear the gospel of Christ. But why is that? Why every nation, Lord? Well, he wanted every nation 
to hear the same gospel so every nation could become one family. All right, now watch this. The center solution for God bringing everybody into one house, one church, one spiritual body, one family, the center solution for this is God Almighty himself and his love, his command to love. As I say earlier, according to John chapter 13, verses 33 through 34, you can write that down. John chapter 13, verses 33 through 34. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13 will tell you about the greatest gift, which is love. You see, God sees humanity as one. God wants humanity to live as one, despite the different ethnic backgrounds, despite the fact that some of you may have different gifts, despite the fact that some of you may have different financial income. Despite the fact that some may be richer than others, taller than others, prettier than others, God wants everybody to be of the same family. In Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 and 28, you can write that down, but I will paraphrase it. In Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 and 28, the Bible says, For ye are all the children of God by faith. Know ye not that so many of you have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ, and then it goes on to say, for there's neither Jew nor Greek, born nor free. You are all one in Christ Jesus. When he says you're neither Jew nor Greek, he's covering every ethnic background. And God wants everybody to be born again and love as he first loved us, because if you love as God first loved us, it will eliminate 99.9% of the issues we are having. That's right. I have that kind of faith in God. I don't believe God would give a solution that does not work. If the solution is not working, you can look at man, and you can also look at the greatest influencer of man, and that is the devil. For 1 Peter 5, 8 says, he walks to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. He wants to devour the hope that you have in you, in Christ. And for those who are seeking God and wants to know more about God, he wants to devour that. And if he can devour the hope that is in you, he can devour the faith that is in you. And if he devours the the faith and the hope, he will also devour the love that you have for Christ or the love that you will learn to have for Christ if you are to learn about him and obey his gospel. Watch this. Jesus points to this on one occasion, spiritual one family. If you have your Bibles, go to Matthew chapter 12. I want you to go to Matthew chapter 12. And in Matthew chapter 12, verses 47 through 50, Jesus had healed on the Sabbath in this particular chapter. He's done a lot of things uh, things on the Sabbath. He was about his father's business even as early in his life. And there became a time when his family was seeking him. And his family was seeking him, and when they finally caught up to him, They said, listen, your family is seeking you. But we're going to expedite time and and drop down to verse 47. Matthew chapter 12, verse 47 through 50. Uh, Jesus is being questioned, and then he will respond. Then one of them said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brother stand without desiring to speak with thee. But he, this is Jesus, but Jesus answered and said unto him, that told him, who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his and said, behold, my mother and my brethren. Verse 53, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister and my mother. Now, Jesus wasn't being disrespectful to his earthly mother and brothers. But Jesus came to do the will of the Heavenly Father, and the Heavenly Father is a spirit. Remember, God is a spirit. So everything Jesus is doing is according to the spirit. And now he's trying to get them to see that there is a spiritual family. There is a spiritual union. There are spiritual relationships that that are vital to the life and the success of all of mankind. See, mankind thinks that success is just built around dollars and degrees and social status and political status. But no, 
There are different types. Of, the spiritual aspect of life is the greatest one. Okay? See, the issues we have today with racism is sinful, and sin on earth took place first in the Garden of Eden in Genesis chapter 3. See, many don't see the next man as potential family. And it's either because they don't know God, do not want to know God, nor his love, or they know God and his commandments, yet choose to be stiff-necked and fill with his own desires. As Paul would point to in Romans chapter 16, verses 17 through 18, when he says, note them that cause division amongst you and avoid them. Then he goes on to talk about those who uh, neglect the will of God to fill their own bellies. So notice, whenever a person refuses to see the next man as their family member, spiritual family member for those who are born again, or those who are, are potential candidates, everybody is a potential candidate because God so loved the world. But if you can't see everyone as a potential candidate, it is either because you don't know God, do not want to know God, nor his love, or you know God or know of God and his commandment, but yet you choose to be stiff-necked and follow your own desires. Proverbs 3, 5 says, do not lean unto your own understanding. Knowing God, you have to be able to see beyond sight. You have to be able to see with the eyes of faith. There was a, a cartoon years ago uh, when I was teenager, just a long time ago when I was a teenager, it was called the Thundercats. Uh, a lot of people may not understand the Thundercats, but my favorite was He-Man, but I also like Thundercats as well. Well, the leader of the Thundercats was called Lion-O. Lion -O had a sword called the Sword of Omen. And oftentimes when he wanted to see beyond his natural sight, he would say, Sword of Omen, give me sight beyond sight. Because even he knew that in order to be able to achieve certain things, you got to be able to see beyond what you can see. Well, we have a sword. We have a sword that's greater than the sword of Omen. It is called the sword of Almighty God, the two-edged sword, the word of God, which is able to pierce the heart of all mankind. And so we have to dive into the word of God. We have to connect with his spirit. We have to be able to see. Beyond that which we can see, we, be, we have to see the spirit realm. And in order to see how the spirit of God works in the lives of others, we have to look through the eyes of faith. We have to be able to see beyond what we can see. We have to be able to see beyond skin tone of an individual. Because you could be uh, mistreating someone who is a born-again child of God. You have to be able to see beyond. And when I say, I'm speaking in general. When I say look beyond the skin tone of a person, I'm not just talking about a, a Caucasian man looking beyond the skin tone of a black man. The door swings both ways. The African-American man has to be able to see the Asian man, the Caucasian man as his family or a potential family member so that we can work together in unison. Could, do you not know if every child of God if every person on this planet, all 7.5 billion people on this planet, do you not know if all of them submitted to the will of God and obeyed the gospel and loved the way God has commanded us to love, there would be no poverty. There would be no skepticism. There would be no envy. There would be no jealousy. There would be no racial injustice. You got to see that this works because there are people that used to live the, in all aspects of those lives. And because someone brought the gospel of Christ to them, they have left that. They're no longer practicing racial hatred. They're no longer having an envious heart. They're no longer, uh, you know, coveting after money and things of that nature. Because they have learned, because they've been born again, the Spirit of God indwells in them and guides them and has given them, given them understanding. And they see the world a whole lot better than just they would see it than with their natural eyesight. They see the world much better than they could with their natural eyesight because now they are able to see beyond what they can see. They can see through the eyes of faith. And they can see God working in the lives of men. 
They can see God working in the lives of everybody uh, that they come in contact with who has had a change of heart. I know I've come into contact with many people that said, uh, Dennis, where is God in all this crisis? I just, I say God is right here. God is right here right now. People say, well, we need Jesus right now. You have Jesus right now. You had Jesus for thousands of years. You had Almighty God for thousands of years. But what are you talking about? God placed in all of mankind something called morals. And even if you didn't know anything about the one true God, there is something in mankind called morals. It's the morality of humankind. And the morals that you have in you, you didn't put them in you yourself. The creator put morals into all of mankind. That's one of the arguments that's used to prove that God is real and that God is this. It's the morality, the morals of mankind. And if you didn't know God, every decision and every situation you find yourself in, you'll find yourself questioning and analyzing every aspect of that situation in order to make the proper decision because you're trying to make sure you make the right decision. That's morals. That's proof that God is real. And for every evil act that has taken place, there is a good that will fight against it. Let me say that again. And every evil act that is taking place, there is a good person, a good group. There is a good that fights against it. Well, that's God. That's God in the, in the hearts of those people fighting and using those people as tools to fight that evil. Now, God can step beyond that, and he can send storms. If you understand the Bible, God sends storms to correct the wicked. I don't have time to deal into that. But the Bible proves that he sends the whirlwind and things of that nature upon the heads of the wicked. God has always been active, and God created something else. God created something called death. See, God dealt with all of the evils that man is doing. You think that he's getting away with it. He's not getting away with it because there he's going to have to face death. And the Bible says in Hebrews 9, 27, that it's appointed unto man to die. After this, the judgment. So everybody that thinks they're getting away, they're not getting away because they have to die, and they're going to meet the one who created death, who has the power and keys over death. So I'm saying this to understand that be encouraged. There's a solution, and I want to challenge every minister out there. It has always been important, and it's always been vital now more so than ever, then we get out there and we get the word out because there is healing in the gospel. Because Isaiah said in Isaiah 53 that by the stripes of, he was prophesying that by the stripes of the slain son of God, we are healed. There is healing in the sacrifice of Christ on the cross. The healing from sin, the healing from anxiety, the healing from depression, the healing from stress. Everybody out there will experience a Job situation. Now, everybody may not experience all what Job experienced at one time because God is not going to give you too much than you can. He's not going to give you more than you can bear. But everybody's going to have a loss of a loved one like Job did. Everybody's going to lose some finances like Job did. That means you're going to lose jobs. Some people are going to lose their health. They're going to become sick. And sometimes your friends are going to question you the way Job friends do, has done. But those of us who are born again, you need to understand that we need to hold fast to the faith because if we do, God can give us our health back. Like I had pneumonia five years ago. God gave me my health back. God can give you your health back. Do not allow the stresses of life, the injustice, uh, the pandemic, Hurricanes, do not allow them to start questioning whether or not it's really to the point to where you want to start to walk away from your faith. And for those who don't know God, you need to know him because he is real. Nature proves that he's real. Your morals prove that he's real. The fact that you can sleep and wake up proves that he's real. The fact that you dream proves that he's real. God is real, and he has sustained me and millions of others who have been born again, and he can sustain you as well. God blesses you through the lives of others and through the hands of others. And God has an ultimate blessing if we remain faithful. It's called eternal life. 
and there is nothing on this planet that you can do more, that can give you more than God. Because remember, all of the success you have, you owe that to God, whether you're born again or not. You owe that to God because you didn't create yourself. You didn't, you know, you studied, but God gave you the wherewithal so that you could move and have your very being, so that you can go out and study, so that you can go out and get an education, so that you can go out and enjoy the final things in life. So you owe it all to God. And when some trials come your way, that's not the time to curse God. That's not the time to turn your back on God because God Almighty Yahweh, Jehovah, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, and his Holy Spirit is real and it rests in my life and it rests upon Stevie B's life, it rests upon everybody's life that has been born again. And guess what? God is no respect to person. God wants to give you his spirit, his love as well. God wants you to live with him in, in eternity, for all eternity as well. And if you can't see it now, it's because you don't have the eyes of faith. But we need you need to understand that God has a sword, a two-edged sword, and that is his holy and divine word. And I want you all to know that God is fighting in the hearts of his people and the goodness and the good morale of other people. God is fighting. And God doesn't and even if God doesn't send people, God has a way of doing things on his own because he is God. And so we need to understand that and we need to always be mindful of that. I have so much more to say, but I'll be taking up too much time. And so I say, I thought, I hope that I've said enough that can help you see that, yes, we have the same problems a different day. You know, they didn't have the, the word racism. You don't find the word racism in the Bible, okay? But you do find hatred in the Bible. You do find instances where there was uh, injustices being treated amongst those who were of a different and who the Pharisees were, were prime examples of being racist, uh, racially hateful towards anybody who was not of them or Jewish. But Jesus spoke against that. Jesus showed in his actions that he still had love for a Samaritan woman, even though he was a Jew. So his life showed that he was no respecter person. He had just as much as love for her being a Samaritan woman as he did his own Jewish brethren. Because God is no respecter person. He is a fair God. And you can trust him. You can trust him. Don't let people say, well, God ain't real because all of this stuff is going on. God never said that there wouldn't be trials in life. Throughout all of the Bible, there was trials. God never said that there wouldn't be hard times. God never said that life would be fair. But you can trust that God is fair. And if you are faithful to him, he'll take care of you. I trust that I said some things to enlighten you. I trust that I said some things that will help us. Though the problems are the same, we also have the same God. There's no such thing as next year with him. He's always in the eternal present. Okay? The same almighty God, he is the same healer of individuals and the same healer of nations. May God bless you. And I want to leave you. If you never uh, obeyed the gospel, you must hear the gospel. Okay? You must believe the gospel. You must repent of your sins. You must confess Jesus Christ to be. The Son of God, you must be baptized according uh, to scriptures for the remission of your sins, and you must remain faithful. Okay? You must hear the gospel according, I'll say that again, you must hear the gospel according to Romans ten seventeen. You must believe the gospel according to Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. Okay? You must repent of your sins according to Acts seventeen thirty. Okay? Uh, you must confess Jesus Christ, according to Matthew chapter 10. And you must also be baptized in water for the remission of your sins, according to Acts 2.38. And you can also use Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16 as well. And Revelation 2.10 teaches us to live faithfully unto death, and he will give us a crown of life. May God bless and keep you. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. God bless you.
Mm-hmm. Now, I have some Absolutely. older films that I'm willing to show <laughs> groups, but you do have to sign a waiver. Depending oh, on okay. who is asking, you may have to give a licensing fee, but um, someone can contact me if they are interested in films on elder abuse, or family caregiving. Those are currently my retired films. And um, the first film, I Am a Caregiver, is a one-hour documentary feature on family caregivings and the perils and the challenges of trying to take care of a loved one, most often who is dying at home, and what Mm -hmm. we have to go through um, to make that happen. That is a film that someone is free to see now that it's off the circuit because that's a – 2015, 2016 produced film, and the grant I received for a social justice documentary short led to me making an elder abuse in Shelby County. That's the county in which I reside. Um, I made Mm -hmm. a a short documentary about that. That is also retired, so someone can contact me to see that um, with, you know, no problem at all, and I can be contacted through my email, Lofton, lowercase L-O-F as in Frank, T-O-N, media, M-E-D-I-A, at gmail.com, loftonmedia at gmail.com. Well, let me ask you this, Kathy. Since uh, you have some films that have been retired, can't you just have like a film showing on social media? Since social media is, is really growing now and everybody's really paying attention to social media now, can't you just have a filming on social media? Just like yes, uh, I can. get you a date? If I, if I find enough interest, sure. But I have to find the interest. Most of the people interested in my films have contacted me privately because they are part of an organization okay. or they want it for work purposes. No one has expressed that just from the general public. So I do show it, but it's from, like I said, organizations, employers. Um, one person said they work for a nursing home and they wanted it to educate their staff. Um, I'm hoping a university may show it. So, but I am very much open. Um, I will put them on YouTube. That is something I waited on because one of them was potentially going to show again at a film festival. But I'm glad you said that Stevie about social media, because I do plan to put both of those retired, um, films, the documentary feature, and the short on my YouTube channel. So, yes. Now, and I might do it on Facebook. Now, how long are the films? Because you know See, our attention first, span ain't that long. <laughs> you're right. Well, when something, something is a feature, you're right, including my own. Um, making that film, I was tired of looking at my own stuff. So Don't, don't say um, that now. <laughs> a, feature, a feature is generally... Um, in the film festival world, something that is 40 minutes or longer. So in the movie theaters, when there's a feature, you're usually sitting there for two hours or more. Right. right. Um, this documentary feature is 59 minutes, including the credits at the end. Okay. The documentary, that's the one entitled I Am a Caregiver. That's the documentary feature, 59 minutes. The okay. The short for which I won the competitive social justice grant to make is, I think, under three minutes. No, I take that back. It may be under six minutes. I'm sorry. That one is under six minutes. So that one's much shorter. Like you said, it won't put anybody to sleep as fast. But actually, that feature will probably not bore anyone. I got a very favorable response from Mm. that one. It is a tearjerker. Um, hmm. You will not be bored because you will be crying. I didn't intend it to be a tearjerker, but it, it, it tugged at the heartstrings of my audiences, and I got an overwhelming response of emotion, even from men. But, Kathy, you uh, this is just my suggestion here, because yes. of what I see, how social media is working. You should announce the date for that film to air on social media. And I'll help you promote, promote it if you want me to. And just show yes, it that, at that date and time on social media. Everything's huh? timing for me, Stevie. That's it. Everything's timing for me. I love your suggestion. I'm open to it. I am not opposed to that. I have been waiting on something. And you are very, very right. A film colleague of mine 
just did a virtual premiere of his film in the same way. Right. He announced right. a date, and he said, on this day, I'm going to do a virtual premiere on Facebook, and everyone can see my film. And that film, I think, of his was from 2019. So, yes, mm-hmm. you are correct. You are on it. I was just waiting on the right timing. Um, you know, with the pandemic and everyone so right. concerned about right. stuff and preoccupied, I don't want to put stuff out there like I'm trying to draw attention to me, right. and I don't want to seem self-serving. So, yes, we definitely should partner and do that and, um, yeah, talk about the timing. And, yes, I would love to. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about it. Now, tell us about these T-shirts you're doing. Well, it's not quite there yet. When George Floyd was murdered and our community, our meaning, my people, my black people, my melanin people, my people of the African-American diaspora. No, it was a murder. It was not a death. And I wanted to do something in response to that. One of the things I did was a film short entitled Child's Feet, a boy's response to the murder of George Floyd. People are asking adults how they feel Everybody's focused on the the adults, but no one ever addressed how our children feel. Some of our children witnessed that as well. So mm-hmm. I decided to do a documentary short that took the voices of boys who knew what happened, who saw what happened, and I wanted to get their emotion. And I also wanted to respond to George Floyd's death by creating a T-shirt, but I started off with the logo I hired an artist to make me a logo to not only talk about George Floyd, but injustice as a whole. Um, We have a plethora of black people who have been killed through police brutality and other unjust methods. And I created a very, very eye catching logo to represent that. And I want it on a t-shirt. I got Chelsea Hurd, who is um, a very, Talented, talented artist. Um, she is the owner of Silent Echo Art, silentechoart.com. She created the logo for me. And I've been holding back because I want to find a vendor. I have yet to find a t shirt vendor who has drop ship capabilities. Um, mm. As a businesswoman, I want someone who can not only Um, create the t-shirt I give you the logo and you put it on the shirt I need you to be able to ship it when my people buy it through my website Um, I need a seamless um, sale for that so if anyone is listening who is a t-shirt vendor with reasonable prices and you have drop ship capabilities so when people press buy it comes to you you get the shirt and you ship it to them I would love to hear from you um, at again Lofton Media at gmail.com and let's talk but yes it's about activism our voices are finally being heard stevie after right. all these years 430 i think it's exactly maybe 431 years or more right we are finally um being heard it took some negative things for us to be heard and i want to be a part of that voice as i said at the top of the show I'm about right. advocacy through art. My creativity through these shirts is advocacy through art, not just my films. And I want people to wear these shirts, and I want them to be able to protest in creative ways. Um, right. People see us as looting. People see us shooting. People They think that our protesting is all these violent and negative things, but it's not. And um, right. I want people to purchase this shirt not only to – commemorate all of the people we've lost but to make a statement in the community well you better get a patent on that logo (laughs) okay no i'm serious you better get a patent on it okay okay well well, kathy i certainly appreciate you coming to the community corner and sharing your films with us and these t-shirts that you're doing as well we certainly appreciate you and I, I got okay. some folks. Who, I got some folks who do some T-shirts too, so I might be able to help you on okay. that uh, front as well. Okay. Yes. Yes, because we need to keep keep getting the message out, most definitely. And I always like it when you invite me here, and uh, to talk about things, and um, of course get spirit fed, 
And um, it's always great talking with you, Stevie. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the Community Corner. It's Kathy O'Loughlin, ladies and gentlemen, from Memphis, Tennessee. Everyone Stay have a great night. Amen. Thank you, Kathy. Okay. Is your congregation in need of lending for a building or expansion project? As your partner and advocate, Diversified Financial Network will take the time to understand your unique situation and develop a financing solution that meets your specific need. It's an exciting time for your congregation, and what you need is a company with expertise in church financing early in the process. Call us today at 1-866-513-6665 or visit us at www.diversifiedfinancegroup.com. These are the announcements for the events and activities in the Churches of Christ. If you would like to have your events or activities announced on this radio show, just give me a call at Carolina, at the Stevie B's Media Production Studios at 910-491-6405. Or send your emails, my new email address, butlersteve1009 at yahoo.com. Due to the pandemic, I won't be making any public announcements regarding public assemblies or meetings, but I will be making announcements regarding events and activities happening here on social media. On Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, and 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, there will be a nationwide gospel call that's sponsored by the Church of Christ in Highland Heights from Houston, Texas. And that telephone number is 857-216-6700. And the access code is 328497. This is a nationwide outreach to those who are not members of the Churches of Christ. And the speakers will be presenting a basic salvation message for them to learn what they must do in order to be saved and information about the Churches of Christ. In addition, this is intended to edify and strengthen the faith of those who are Christians. On Tuesday, the Dale Crest Church of Christ in San Antonio, Texas, presents Women's Virtual Bible Class at 6.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on www.zoom.com. And the class ID is 821 3692 On Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Church of Christ Ministers present a virtual sermon series 101 at the theme of Timeless Truths and Truthless Times. Live on Facebook and on YouTube. Go to the YouTube channel, Somebody Ought to Come Preaching. And for more information, contact www.allingtonroadcoc.com forward slash www.hilltopcoc.org. Daily on Monday through Friday, there's at 6.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, there's Ladies in Christ Prayer Line, hosted by the Church of Christ in Lafayette, Louisiana. And the telephone is 605-472-5203. And the access code is 514 on May the 17th through September the 16th, there'll be a virtual revival conference to be streamed on Facebook and YouTube from the Church of Christ, coast to coast. There's 16 preachers, four weeks of revival, six weeks apart, over 50 churches streaming. And week four, September the 13th through the 16th. And for more information, send your emails to revivalconference.coc at gmail.com. On November the 9th and the 10th, there'll be a live debate on YouTube, live on Faith Comes By Hearing at www.youtube.com forward slash Faith Cometh by Hearing. And the subject of discussion will be Is Water Baptism Essential for Salvation? And in the affirmative will be Anthony Johnson from the Church of Christ in Berman, Georgia. And in the now will be Brandon Thomas from the Christian Church in Belleville, Illinois. On October the 15th, no, disregard that announcement. (laughs) 
my co-host Steve Cordo from the Gospel Light Radio Show that airs on Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time has a new book entitled God, Grace, and You. And to order this book, just go to the 21st Century Christian Catalog. And my program, re- as a program reminder, Stevie B's Media Production Presents, we're airing live shows here on Vlog Talk Radio. Monday of the month, I'll be hosting a live show, Stevie B's the Gospel Light Radio Show Special Edition, and that show will air from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And my co-host, Tim Bent, from the Oham Lane Church of Christ there in Abilene, Texas, will be presenting the message the broadcast. And then on Tuesday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be hosting a live show, What a Word from the Lord radio show. And each week we'll have a special guest speaker on this broadcast from the Brotherhood of the Churches of Christ. We'll be presenting a lesson from the Word of God. We also have the Community Corner segment. That segment for small business owners and entrepreneurs who have products and services for our community. And also my co-host Lou Gibbons from the Overbrook Park Church of Christ there in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And Edward Bishop from the Niagara Falls Church of Christ there in Niagara Falls, New York. We'll be presenting lessons from the Word of God on this broadcast. And also on Thursday evening from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, I'll be hosting a live show, the Gospel Light Radio Show, and I have eight co-hosts on that show to be presenting lessons from the Word of God. And each week I have two of my co-hosts on the air with me. I'm also taking questions from my shouted out platform on social media, Facebook, I'll be posing to one of my co-hosts on that show as well. And then on Friday evening, new time for Stevie B's Acapella Gospel Music Blast Radio Show. That show will air from 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 to 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. And on that radio show, I'm playing some of the world's greatest acapella gospel music artists, The Sweet Sounds of Horses. We also have the Story Glory segment where we're interviewing the artists that we actually play on that show. And my next scheduled interview will be this Friday night on September the 4th. We'll be interviewing the group Southside Acapella Ensemble out of Durham, North Carolina. We also have the Top 20 Countdown show that we air in the broadcast. And the next show will be on September the 18th. I'll be counting down my Top 20 Acapella Gospel songs for the month of September. And also we have scheduled on September the 11th, Monte Cuba from Houston, Texas. I'll be dating for the album on the show. And on September the 25th, we'll have, we have Shane Ekaparis out of Houston, Texas. We'll be debuting their new EP on that broadcast as well. My own demand episodes, if you can't catch any of these live shows, wherever you're getting your favorite podcast from, just go type in Stevie B Media Productions, and you should be able to see all of these on-demand episodes. I'd always like to refer people to the major uh, musical platforms, Spotify, Outlet Radio, Apple iTunes, and iWave Radio, and also ACARadio.net, also on YouTube, go to my YouTube channel, and also on YouTube, go to the Church TV Network, and see their playlist, Acapella Radio. You should be able to see these on-demand episodes as well. Also on World of Acapella and Deezer, and coming soon to Pandora as well, and also on Spreaker.com. I'd like to give a shout-out to all of my sponsors who are sponsoring this radio show. Sharon Norwood, she lives in Chicago, Illinois, for companies called Organo. Uh, her slogan is a health product for healthier living. And with that, Memorial Turner Direct Crematory Services from DeSoto, Texas. And my sponsor, Stanley Phillips. He's the owner of a Touch of Glass Barrel in Little Rock, Arkansas. Certainly appreciate him. And my, the Brookside Financial Network, LLC, out of Dallas, Texas. And the owner is Mark and Charlotte Carroll. And my sponsor, Cheryl Marab. She's with the Compassionate Haiti Leaders. She's been serving Northern Haiti for 20 plus years. And they invite you to become part of something greater than yourselves. So please visit and donate. At Haiti at www.compassionhatyleader.ca. And my sponsor, Yvonne Blazing Cracker Gooch from Nashville, Tennessee. Certainly appreciate her. I have two new sponsors, Melvin Jackson from High Point, North Carolina, and Marquise Holloman from Charlotte, North Carolina. Their company is called Unique Transportation Auto Car Hauling from Charlotte, 
North Carolina. And Stephanie Booker Wilson, she has the Stephanie Song Vocal Studio in Greensboro, North Carolina. Certainly appreciate all of my sponsors. And the three E's of Stephen Media Production. It is the objective of this broadcast. We want to educate, we want to edify, we want to encourage you in the study of God's Word. And that will conclude my program announcements. You're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Stay tuned. From the Lord Radio Show. Now, my co host, Edward Bishop, and his subject, There's a Snake in the Grass. Oh. <laughs> you want to bring it out here? No. Let me see. 
me on record. Really we're good. doing it all. No, I didn't know what you guys were doing. Well, I got you we're, on the we're phone. We're trying to fix now. He's on his phone. That was just, we're trying to fix the uh, light. Edward Bishop, you are now live. Well, I just lost Edward. A broken heart, a tired, weary mind. When my soul's in trouble, friends can't help me. Contentment's so hard to find. But I remember how long, long ago, my mama sang to Jesus. How he sits up high, looks down low, always here beside us. Strong, baby. 
That's what happens when you do live radio. Sometimes you just never know what you're going to get. But here's my co-host, Edward Bishop from Niagara Falls, New York. The subject is, There's a Snake in the Grass. I would like to, first of all, take this time out to thank Brother Butler for giving me the opportunity for you on this evening. More importantly, above all, I want to thank the God of Heaven for giving me the strength and the ability to be able to stand before you on this evening. For it is in him that we live, we move, and we have our very being. We are because he is. Our amness is simply wrapped up in his isness. Now, having said that, if you have your copy of God's engrafted word, which is able to save our very soul, God's basic instructions before leaving this earth. The book of Genesis, the third chapter, verses 1 through 7. That's the book of Genesis, the third chapter, verses 1 through 7. Not a serpent, how than any beast, of the field, which the Lord God has made and said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eye. And the tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her. And he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open. And they knew they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves. Apron. I want to speak briefly as the Spirit shall guide. With the star implanted in our mind, in the grass. Is that all right? There's a snake in the grass. There was a young man. And he was going through the jungle. And as he was going through the jungle, for a snake. 
and the snake was injured. And the snake asked the young man, he said, son, would you mind taking me home and helping me out and nursing me back to health? The young man replied, he said, sure, I can do that. So he picked the snake up, snake home, fed the snake, took care of the snake, gave the snake drink and everything that the snake may have needed to be comfortable. So the snake got well enough to be returned back to its natural habitat. And as the young man approached the area, found the snake, he put the snake down. And when he put the snake down, the snake bit him. The young man asked the snake, he said, did I not take care of you? Did I not nurse you and feed you and help you bring back? to a portion of health and strength. Did all these things for me. The young man replied, he said, if I did all these things for you, why is it that you bit me? The snake replied, you knew I was a snake when you picked it, me up. If you're going to be a snake, be a snake. At least that way I know how to deal with you. Or if I want to deal with you. I'm here to let us all know on this evening that there is indeed a snake in the grass. And his name is Satan. Satan is slick. Satan is smooth. Talking about a real smooth criminal. Michael Jackson ain't got nothing on Satan. Satan knows more about you than you know. That's why Jesus told Peter. He said, Satan's desire is to shift you as we. That's why God tells us to be vigilant because the devil is like that warring line. He's seeking whom he may devour. And Satan knows all of our weaknesses. No matter how strong you think you are, no matter how biblical you may be, there's always a weak spot in our arms. There's always that one thing. Get us going and make us put down our Christianity. And Satan knows what button to push. He knows that a beautiful woman is your weakness. Believe that every time you turn around, there's going to be a beautiful woman. He knows that food and gluttony is your weakness. Every time you turn around, 
there's going to be a restaurant. Or if you're watching TV, every other ad is going to be about food. Oh, this gossiping is your weak spot. You best believe he is going to make sure that most of the phone calls you get, somebody is going to call you and tell you about what so-and-so did. You, that's why the Bible tells us that we have to put on a whole armor of God. That we may be able to fight against the powers and the principality of Satan. Arrows of Satan. The poisonous darts of Satan. The trials, the temptation of Satan. Satan shows you the pleasures of sin. But he hides the price tag, which is your soul. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world And lose his soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? There is nothing on this earth more valuable than your soul. And to lose it over Things that really don't matter. Over things that are going to burn up anyway. It's a complete travesty. Sin is like a credit card. You enjoy now. Payment is not worth it. Sin is pleasant for a season, but it brings forth death. It brings forth separation from God. And those who do not know the gospel of Christ, and those who do not know God, the Bible tells us that these people shall be punished everlastingly away from the power and the presence of God. Flaming fire. In hell, where there is no peace, where there will be no water, no breaks in between, just pain, suffering for all of eternity. Satan has one job to do. And he does his job extremely well. A part-time Christian will never ever Beat a full time Satan. I'll say it again. A part time Christian will never ever beat a full time Satan. You are a Christian. It's on Sunday morning. And Wednesday evening, Satan has you. You can't beat Satan 
by yourself. That bad. So always remember that there's a snake in the grass. And some of Satan's slick tricks is racism, hatred, gossip, all the list goes on and on and on. All the things that the world is facing today are the tricks causing division both in the world and in the church. And God is not pleased. And that, if that is going on when he comes back, God is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. So if you are a member of the body of Christ, if you're partaking of in, in any of that stuff, get your house in order. Get right. Because we are all going to have to stand before God. And give a gun in his body, whether it was good or was evil, even the secret things that we've done. You think you got away with something just because nobody else saw you. But God saw you. And he is the one that each and every one of us is going to have to stand before. He is the one that every knee is going to bow before and every tongue is going to confess it's the now or it's the later thing. Do it now and be saved. And live faithful unto death. And God has promised you a crown of life that will never ever fade away. But if not, he's going to make you confess his name. Then he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Enter into the lake of fire. The choice is yours. But remember, Satan is slick. Satan is smooth. Satan knows your weaknesses. He knows mine. And every chance he gets, he's going to use it against you. That's why it is extremely important that you always study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the road of truth. So that way, when Satan poisons out our throne, you'll be able to withstand it. Because we all know that Satan is the God of this world. God gave Adam and Eve. One commandment. He told him, he said, you can eat of any tree in the garden. You can do whatever you want in the garden. You can lay down with the animals. They won't attack you. You can lay down with the insects. They won't bite you. All you got to do is follow my one commandment. All you got to do is not eat of the tree. This is the midst of the garden. All you got to do 
is you are in charge of everything. Just take care of the garden and don't eat of that tree. And you can live in peace and harmony with me forever and I will walk with you and I will talk with you. We will communicate with each other on a daily basis. But here comes Satan and told Eve, Eve, guess what? God's holding back on you. God is holding back the best from you. You can be better to us. In fact, I know he told you that if you eat it, you'll die. But he didn't really mean it. In other words, God was lying to you. And what happened? Eve partook of the fruit. And Adam partook of the fruit. And it cost them to lose that communication with God. It caused them to lose the peace that they had with God. It caused them. I'm here to let you know on this evening that if you are afraid, that's not of God, but it's of Satan, because the Bible tells us that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of peace and a power and a sound mind. So if you are afraid this evening, it's not from God, but from Satan. That word fear simply means false evidence appearing real. And because they partook of the fruit. I'm here to let you know on this evening, there is always consequences for your actions. The choices you make can and cost you more than you are willing to pay and are able to pay and will take you further did you want to go, it will keep you longer than you plan on staying, and it will ultimately cost you more than you are willing to pay. Oh, I'm here to let you know, Warren, this evening, that everything that looks good ain't good. Everything that shines ain't a diamond. Everything that glitters is not gold. Beware of Satan's tricks. Beware of his clever devices. Be careful. Because like I said, Satan slipped. Satan is smooth. That's why the Bible tells us that he's a liar and the father of them. Be careful. I thank you for your time and your attention. I will now turn it all over back to my brother Butler. If you have any questions, please feel free to get a hold of him and he'll get a hold of me. I thank you for your time. In your attention. It ain't easy. No. Sometimes it gets hard down here, Lord. Sometimes it gets rough. So rough, so rough. Sometimes it gets tough for me. Has anybody 
you're listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for spending a little time with us this evening in a study of God's Word. I want to thank my special guest speaker, Dennis Lamar Melton, and my co-host, Edward Bishop. Certainly appreciate their efforts on the broadcast this evening. These brothers proclaim the Word of God on this radio show. Also in the community corner, my special guest, Kathy O'Loughlin. Certainly appreciate her for coming on the show, sharing her uh, information regarding her films. And we're looking forward to Kathy putting films on social media. I just think that would be a good thing for the general public to view. And also um, the, the activism that she's involved in as well. I certainly appreciate everyone who participated on the show this evening. What a blessing it is to be able to claim the word of God on a Tuesday evening. It is my prayer that these lessons this evening have been beneficial to your spiritual lives and that your relationship with the Lord has been strengthened not only because you're tuning in to this radio show, but because you're giving yourself over to a study of God's word. So until we meet again, I pray God's continual blessings upon your lives and that he bless you real, real good. You've been listening to What a Word from the Lord radio show. And on behalf of my co-host Edward Bishop and Lou Gilberts, we really do appreciate your love and support for these radio programs. I'm your host, Stevie R. Butler. Good night, everybody. God bless you. Every voice I sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmony Of liberty
Listening to What a Word from the Lord Radio Show, episode 172. Flowing down the river of life. Check the spiritual menu. 